On this episode, we talk about kids jumping from club to club, what they should be doing when they train on their own, and David Beckham being a metrosexual. What's up, everybody? This is Ray Sanders, and this is episode number eight. Eight, Caesar. Of Coach Knows Best. I'm kind of thrown off there. We thought it was seven. So sweet, so I'm pumped up. Caesar, the energy level, I can feel it. It mm, feels better. Nice. No, no, no. I'm being serious. It feels better than it did last week. Last week, we were just kind of out of it. You're not even making eye contact with me. No. You're looking at your phone. So? You're not into it. So Caesar has some bad news. He's having surgery on his knee, and they literally said, we're going to have surgery on your knee, but we can't fix it. So that sucks, but he's still going to have surgery on it. Um, and I had good morning. Uh, Caesar got to the office late. He obviously doesn't like to work. He's lazy. But it's okay. We I was him, here earlier, but you weren't here, so I left. We gave him the morning off. And so I had a busy morning as well. Saw some of the girls that I coach. i um, excited to get back to club after their season is done. Um, outside of that, the topics today are awesome, so I'm pumped up. The question of the day I'll ask up front, what do you guys think is best as it pertains to soccer, gear, apparel, whatever? Nike, Adidas, Puma, or maybe other? What do you guys think? Put it in the comments. Let me know and tell me why. Don't just be like Nike. Tell me why. Also, I'm going to be talking about some technical work as far as what players can be doing on their own. Um, I'm going to be talking about that today so I can put together basically a universal little training plan if you want to get that. Email me. I'll give that to you if you're a player, a parent, whatever it may be. It'll be very basic, but it'll be very precise as well. So email me at ray7sanders at gmail.com. That's ray 7 Sanders like the kernel at imag.com. So email me, I'll give that to you for free. Um, it's just information and obviously the kids have to do it. But that being said, let's stop talking Caesar. Let's rock and roll, let's get into it. Why do kids jump from club to club? Sweet, so this is a controversial topic. Um, we're part of the problem even to a degree um, as far as it pertains to our club and we're consciously aware of that and we're really trying to change uh, what I believe the problem of why it is that kids are jumping from, to, from club to club. So I think that it really just basically comes down to two main things. One, people leave uh, or jump uh, from club to club because they're chasing medals. They're just going from one team to the other because they're winning a tournament and they're getting a bunch of medals and on and on, right? They're not really taking into consideration the development aspect, so we'll talk about that in a second. The second reason why people jump and they'll go to another club is because of false promises. And really, we'll call it promises, but they end up being false promises. A very quick example. This is why I'm a little riled up about this topic. A very quick example. I'm talking to a mom yesterday, and her daughter is being, and she plays for our club, the daughter does, and they're being pursued by another situation, another club. And the mom told me that she was told by that coach that she be, that, that coach believes that her daughter is a Division One soccer player. Now look. Like the girl, I definitely want her to stay within the club, but she for sure is not a Division One soccer player. And somebody needs to be realistic with her. So this mom was very upfront about it. She said, look, I don't know the difference. Like they were playing AYSO three or four years ago. And she was like, look, I don't know the difference. And they're relying on the clubs and the organizations to ultimately be honest with them and tell them realistically where their child falls. And the excitement of the division one concept sounds great so it's like well this person believes in my kid and this other person doesn't they believe she could be division one and this other person doesn't and i understand those concepts the problem is is that somebody believing in you doesn't make you a division one soccer player necessarily there's a lot of other elements that come to it so what i hate within this concept is now if this girl ends up going within that circumstance puts everything all of her hopes and dreams into playing division one doesn't make it now her soccer career ends because she didn't realistically assess herself and she could have played Division II, Division III, NAIA and continued to play for four years. So that's what really frustrates me. We, about eight years ago or so, we had a team that ended up leaving our club because all these kids were promised professional tryouts, uh, professional scouts were going to come look at them and on and on. And I talked to one of the kids at Indoor maybe about a year ago and now he's not a kid, he's a man, he's like 24 years old. And he's like, remember all that da, 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 and we're talking about it? I was like, yep. And he's like, dude, we didn't even get one tryout, not one kid, not one anything. It was just false promises. And so the motivation behind it and the integrity behind it is really irrelevant. The point is, is that's why people inevitably end up leaving. Um, because they're promised all this stuff that's just not true. They need somebody that's going to be honest with them and say, look, you're not going to be a pro, but you could be a Division II soccer player and you could get a nice little scholarship. 
You live in San Diego, right? Right? We got a couple of guests here today, so. Um, the other reason why is because of winning or losing or all these different things. So a good example of this would be a kid within our younger age groups. He was recruited by another club. He ended up leaving. He was on our B team. He ends up leaving, going to the A team. He was there on the A team for like two months. And what did they do? They moved him down to the B team. And so now he quit. Now he doesn't play soccer at all, right? He's a little, little guy. He's like 10 years old. And the thing that really frustrates me about that is that talent is talent. Talent is talent. Look, at if, if the A team, B team, C team concept and chasing medals and I'm going to go play for this team because they won and they're going to put me on the A team and I'm on the B team over here is irrelevant. That does not make your kid any better or any worse. So that's usually why people leave. I would rather be, people will have a mentality of, I would rather play on an A team at another club than to be on the B team at this club. But then they go on the A team at another club and they're on a C team of the community. So it doesn't make any sense. Or they're like, well, this team just won this tournament and we haven't won a tournament in a year. Yeah, it's because they go to these donkey tournaments that nobody's ever heard of and we go to challenging tournaments. So you have to take all that into consideration. The, the development components, are they putting you into the situation where you're going to get the right type of exposure? Are they being honest with you? Are they telling you, look, you're only a Division II soccer player, but let's pursue those Division II opportunities. And so that's why there's a lot of club hopping. Certainly people hate their coach, they hate their club, they hate this guy, they hate that person. So there's different reasons why people leave, but the, 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 the false information, the misleading of, of people, the false promises, that's a, that's a big element, and then just chasing a medal. Like, look, dude, you can buy all these medals. You can buy these at, at uh, any type of Raymond's trophies. They should give us some money to our show, Raymond's Trophies in Bakersfield. Uh, you can go and buy any trophy or medal that you want there. So, anyways, that's it. Next question. What are the characteristics of a good soccer player? So, what are the characteristics of a good soccer player? There's a lot of different things that make up a good soccer player, and I'm not going to be able to answer it in three minutes. However, I will address... So very quick, from a tactical standpoint, right, you have to have a high soccer IQ, right? Put that on a shelf. Another aspect is you've got to be good technically. You've got to have good individual skill. You've got to be able to pass, trap, a, a good first touch, right? No matter where you are on the field, you have a good first touch. Can you be able to use multiple surfaces of your foot? Take that, put it on a shelf. The physical attributes, right? It's kind of funny when people talk about like, because I'm a short dude, right? I'm like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, and then people are like, oh, well, Messi's only like 5'6", and yes, that's 5'5". Five, five. It's like, yeah, Messi is also like one of the fastest human beings in, in the entire world. He's extremely fast, and he can run with the ball faster than anybody. So, you know, it's like parents will tell me like, oh, well, my kid's real short, but so is Messi. I'm like, yeah, but Messi's fast, and your kid is slow as dirt. So I don't know if dirt's slow or not. but So the point is, is that, you got to be fast, you know, somewhat. Speed is ultimately something that you can't teach. That's really important. Uh, you got to be, you got to be fit. You've got to be able to run for 90 minutes. Like it's kind of interesting when I see kids who uh, don't like to run and they're playing soccer. It's like not liking to swim or something. You're playing water polo. Like that just doesn't make any sense. So, but even putting that on the shelf, I think the characteristic that is just the driving force behind every great player, so those things will make good players, but the great players, they really have something special to them as far as like their, their mental aspects, right, um, of the game. And so the mental characteristics that I think that make a good soccer player, I think one of the big ones is confidence. Now the tricky thing with the confidence concept is that is confidence, but it's a little bit of cockiness. It's a little bit of, they know that they're the best, but the confidence that they're gonna go out and back it up. They, they know that they're the best and they like that taste, they like that feeling, and then they go and back it up. Certainly humility is valued. Uh, certainly there should be some aspect of humility of knowing that you're not actually the best and you, you're driven every single day to go out and work, but while at the same time, that humility um, to know that you're not the best also is accompanied with the desire to be the best, so then therefore you go out and you work, and then you back it up because you want to be the best. So I just think confidence is something that's really, really underrated. I would say that the kids that, that are scared in the big moments, that they, that they crack in the big moments, that those kids can be good, but they're never gonna, they're never gonna be great. Um, you know, some of the other things I think is a work ethic. You know, everybody looks at people like David Beckham, he was classified as like this metrosexual, uh, you know what metrosexual is, Caesar? No, it's kind of like, um, it's like a dude who like gets his eyebrows waxed or like gets pedicures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, 
So it cares about the way he looks. He wants to look good. Oh, so he's a good looking lad. Yes. So <laughs> so David Beckham was a metrosexual type of a character and they like he's soft and on and on. How about Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Everybody kinda looks at him like a pretty boy. Cristiano Ronaldo wakes up at five o'clock every morning and trains. Right? So look at his work ethic. He works harder than anybody else. So the work ethic of some of these celebrity pretty boy prima donnas, they back it up, right? Like Beyonce, if you look at her, it's not soccer, but if you look at her, like she would have to get reminded to eat because of her work ethic. So when you look at the characteristics of all greatness, they have a tremendous work ethic that's just really not matched. So we have kids all the time, I'm gonna go play for Barcelona one day, I'm gonna go play at UCLA, and their work ethic is piss poor. Like it just doesn't make any sense. And then you have some club or some coach from another club telling them that they're gonna be the next Messi. See question one. So I, that, that to me is a big one. They have to have an immense amount of work ethic, obviously confidence. Um, I think that another big one is that they hate to lose. So you have to hate, I think that for me, this is something that has maybe separated me a little bit. I hate losing more than I love winning. So, and that's a weird idea. I hate losing more than I love winning. And when you see that from a kid, everybody hates losing at the game. When you lose at the game, everybody's sad, mm -hmm, I'm sad. but do you hate losing on Tuesday? Do you hate losing on Wednesday? That is what matters. Do you hate losing even probably a little bit more than you love winning? So. That's uh, some of the characteristics that I think make a good soccer player. Now, all that being said, that's not the only thing. You can have all those characteristics and, and not have some of the other elements that I mentioned earlier, and it doesn't really matter. But um, I think it's a, it, from a mental standpoint, those are the characteristics that make a good player. What should my kid do when they train on their own? Cool. Great question. For sure cannot be answered uh, within this small segment. However, if you want a small minimal, it's very basic, so don't get too excited. But a minimal training plan, like I said at the beginning, I will email it to you if you email me, ray7sanders at gmail.com. What I think that kids should do, I think one of the, so they for sure should be working on their individual skill. Um, a quick shout out to a guy in the community. His name is Phil Arias. He's a childhood best friend. I would not have been as good of a soccer player as I was had it not been for him because he really taught me how to train on my own. Um, I remember when we would go out and we'd be drenched. Our work ethic, what it was that we were doing on and on, it was really, really high. Um, I had a quick story. So I used to train on my own. I'd call a group of friends of mine. They would never train. So uh, one day they called me up and they're like, hey, we're at Highland. Come over and train with us. Like, dude, they're on a payphone at Highland, by the way, right? This is like 1997 or so. So they're like, come over to Highland, we're training, and da, da 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 So I come over, and they're taking PKs, and they're doing crosses, and one guy's laying down, there's three of them. One guy's laying down, like they're kind of goofing off. So I'm there for like 30 minutes, I'm all excited. I'm like, all right, dude, so when are we gonna start training? He's like, what, what do you mean? We're, we're doing it, we're training, we're kicking the soccer ball. That to me is not training. I will talk to kids all the time, it was a joke, right? So we're just goofing off. Now that's fun, we were goofing off with a soccer ball, but that wasn't training. So there's all, all the time, I'll hear about kids, like, oh, I trained in my backyard yesterday for three hours. It's like, well, what'd you do? I'm like, I don't know, I just did stuff. So there should be some structure behind what it is that you're doing. That's number one. Um, the intensity level is, needs to be very, very high. That's number two. As it pertains to some of the more specifics without getting into it too much, I think that you should really be working on um, general first touch, uh, speed dribbling, uh, using multiple surfaces of your foot, being able to change direction um, as it pertains to that. If you can get a partner, driving the ball back and forth just a thousand times, um, you know, going, going apart 40 yards and just driving the ball back and forth with each foot can work on so many components of shooting, first touch, preparation touch, on and on. So those are some of the things that kids should be doing. I think that it is better for a kid to go in their backyard and work for 40 minutes um, with high levels of intensity, 10 minutes of juggling, so let's say 50 minutes, 10 minutes of juggling, 20 minutes of one aspect, 20 minutes of another, and then you're done. Do that three days a week and you're, you'll be a, a college player, for sure. Like, I literally believe that. Maybe not a pro, but I literally believe that. The biggest element that is the difference between an American soccer player and a European soccer player is the quantity that they play. So we, if, if you just love it and you're playing and you're touching the ball and it's high levels of intensity, you'll get much better. You should be working on your individual skill. Uh, get a partner if you can. And that's about it. Email me. Thank you. All right, so that is it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Energy level was high. It was super sporadic, but we're rushing through it just a little bit. We had a guest. They didn't even want to come on. It really hurts my feelings. But we'll, we'll try to persuade them 
for a future time. They got camera shy. And it's a little intimidating, right, Caesar? Like, you kind of get nervous sometimes just talking. No, no, no. Behind there. I just, I'm just down to embarrass myself is kind of what it comes down to. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I sent my email literally like three times this episode. So we're going to make it a fourth and a fifth. Ray7Sanders at gmail.com is Ray7Sanders, like the colonel, at amaji.com. Uh, other than that, thanks a lot. See you next episode.